Stefan, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. Well, hello, Fire Nation. It is so good to be here. Uh, This is a very full circle moment for me because this is actually the first business podcast I ever found uh, about five to six years ago trying to start a business. So it's great to be here. And I actually don't think I've ever shared this fact on a podcast before, but in college, I did an internship with the Walt Disney Company and specifically worked in the character department at Parks and Resorts. So I gave quite a few hugs during that time as the very lovable dog, Pluto. And there are probably people listening today that I high-fived either you or your kids at some point uh, with a little bit of fur on me. Okay, well, I will say first and foremost, Fire Nation, if you haven't read Walt Disney's biography, like that is a must read for entrepreneurs. It is just incredible. I love the messaging. I love the stories and how he built Walt Disney World and everything that he did, you know, throughout his entire illustrious life. And I wonder, I actually went to Walt Disney World uh, and Walt Disneyland multiple times, I will say. So we might have given each other a high five, Stefan, and not even known it. So that's super cool. We, we may have met before this day. Who knows? <laughs> oh, I love that. So Listen, to kind of really switch things up a little bit, because we're going to go down a different path, and I've kind of let Fire Nation know a little bit about what this interview is going to be about and what this masterclass is going to be focused on, but a lot of people probably don't also know this about you, is that you grew up in a fundamentalist cult. So talk about that, because you know a lot of people have seen documentaries on Netflix, they've heard about it, and they may not really know the details of what that really means. So talk about what that was like and how that impacted your childhood. A lot of people think that they had the same childhood as me because they grew up religious, or they grew up in you know some specific strict type of family. Um, but the environment that I grew up in was very much a, we are right, we have the answer, we have the truth, and everybody else is wrong, right? So it was a, you know, it was a Protestant Christian space that believed that everybody else, Protestant, Catholic, otherwise, basically everybody else was wrong, everybody else was going to hell, and we had the answer and we had the truth. And so, you know, the number one thing I can say about it is it was really a childhood governed by fear. And there's a lot of people that as adults are trying to overcome fear. You know, I obviously still have fears of my own that I work through, um, but I really get it because the, the way I was raised taught me how to be afraid more than anything else. And so we're talking fear of God, fear of guilt, fear of hell, but also fear of money, fear of sex. You know what I mean? All of these things were just to be feared. And so for 18 years of life, I grow up in this world very much knowing how to be afraid because that's what we were taught to do. And then at 18 years old, ultimately I make a choice. This isn't for me anymore. I gotta be me, I gotta own my truth. Even me just being a gay man in this world was not going to work. And so at 18, I had the choice and I started over. And um, so, you know, I get the terrifying moments of leaving everything behind that people are faced with because that was my choice. That was my life. The way I was raised taught me to be afraid. And Fire Nation, I really wanted to just repeat that one phrase because you don't have to have been raised in a fundamentalist cult to have experienced these things. I think there's a lot of people that are listening right now that are like, you know what, maybe it wasn't quite that intense in a lot of these areas, but I had these things that were imparted upon me. I had these fears that were just continuously hammered in me over and over again. Maybe it was through your schooling system. Maybe it was from your parents. Maybe it was from whoever it was that was a big impact in your early childhood years. So I think a lot of people can really resonate with it. And I can tell you one thing that really kind of gave me an aha moment because I had a great childhood from my perspective. I mean, I grew up in a very small town in Maine and you know, I, I really feel like a lot of things about my childhood were very healthy but I can remember so clearly the moment I read the book Secrets of the Millionaire Minds by T. Harv mm. Ecker. And that book made me realize that, okay, something I've known my whole life is that I'm afraid of failure. 
like almost every single human being is afraid of failure. But something I didn't realize is that I was also afraid of success and that so many human beings are afraid of success. Like we think we want to be successful and we probably do, but we have this like subconscious fear of it because of those things, like you said, Stefan, like, you know, afraid of money. Money doesn't grow on trees, turn off the lights, all these different things. And so even if you've had what you may think is a very healthy, normal childhood fire nation, you very, very well may have, you still have these subconscious things that could have been really imparted upon you that you don't even know. And again, it was like, I was thinking it was in my mid twenties when I read that book and I was like, oh my God, like that really is me. Like he's talking about me, like this fear of success is real. And I had to work through some of these things. But one thing that I kind of want to move into, Stefan, is just dwelling on the past. Like a lot of people, I call them time travelers. They're either dwelling on the past and just being really sad and depressed about what happened in their past, or they're stressed and scared of the future. Like that's how they're spending all of their time instead of just like being in that present moment, which is right now and and doing what you can do today to move forward in a positive direction. So kind of talk about that. Like how did you personally come to the belief that it's time to build the future right now? Don't dwell on that past. Focus on right this moment. Yeah, that's such a good question. And I obviously have an interesting story, but so does everyone, right? You've got stuff in your story that's interesting. Everybody that's listening has an interesting story. And the danger, I think, for all of us is that we make an identity out of our story in a way that we can't move beyond it, right? And so, you know, the way I view my past, my story, my childhood, all of that, is it was very much a starting point for me. And I remember the moment when, so I was 18, and it was like a Tuesday evening, and my dad said, you got to get out of the house by Saturday. So I had a few days to figure everything out. Um, I packed up everything into this silver Chevy Monte Carlo that I had at the time. And I remember I drove to meet a friend who I was going to stay with for a little while. And I was sitting on top of this parking garage in my little hometown. And I remember thinking to myself, this moment could go one of two ways. It could either be the beginning of a spiral because there's a lot of people that say that I'm doomed right now and this is not going to work out and you know my life as I know it is over or we could flip that around and say you know my life as I know it is over and this is a starting point of something new and it wasn't like I was going to forget that the past happened or pretend that I hadn't had the childhood that I have but I made a conscious choice in that moment that we were going to create something new And I think it's great to know your roots. It's great to know where you've come from. But the way we use the past needs to fuel us in the present rather than being an excuse in the present. And I think that could be said about the past or the future, right? It's not a problem to forward cast what you want to create in the future as long as it's moving you to action in the present, not paralyzing you in the present. Does that make sense? Totally. So the bottom line is, here you are in the present moment listening today, right? And you have a story, and you've also got some dreams. You've also got some stuff that you'd like to accomplish in the, in the future. And the only place that you have to create is right here and right now. And so ultimately, I would just say, look at how you're using the past and look at what that causes you to do in this moment. If the stories you're telling about the past leave you feeling like you're, you know, like you have a disadvantage, like you can't do it, like you're not worthy. Your past is only hindering you, right? But one of my favorite spiritual texts, of course, in Miracles says, the past is not here. So it's only our interpretations of the past that can hurt us. And that might sound a little bit woo woo for some people listening today, but there's some truth to it, right? That ultimately your past is not here. What happened when you were a kid? What happened when you were in college? What happened when you were growing up? None of those things are ultimately here. The only thing that is here is you and the stories you tell yourself that ultimately create your life. So that's what we've got to look at. Whatever your past is and whatever you want your future to be, what are the stories you're carrying into this present moment and how are they shaping the way you show up in this moment? Is there a specific strategy that you've used or you've seen other people use 
where we can actually do this on a daily basis or a weekly basis, maybe like a journaling or a meditating to really be able to cut off the parts of the past that we don't want to be having with us in this present moment. Can you kind of share that with Fire Nation? Sure. I would say a couple of things. Um, Personally, for me, I try to meditate twice a day, a little bit in the morning, a little bit at night. Uh, It is very basic meditation. I tell my mastermind all the time, if there is anybody who understands not wanting to sit down and meditate, it is me. My brain always suggests like 30 seconds in, this is long enough. Why don't we just get up and end the meditation? Uh, So I don't do anything crazy or complicated or too long. Um, But I know that it's been proven that meditation can literally undo some of the trauma stored in your brain, in your body, in your cells, that it really has a reversing effect on so much of the stuff that we accumulate over the years. So I meditate, I try to meditate every day, morning and night as a kind of a reset. Um, And I think that really does make a difference in terms of letting go of some of that past stuff. The other thing I would say is every single morning, I start my day on airplane mode really as a a purposeful choice so that I get to set the tone of the day, not my emails, right? Like I think there's a lot of people listening. If you're honest with yourself, your notifications set the tone of the day. And so maybe sometimes that's PayPal notifications and you're happy with it. Maybe sometimes it's your ex or whatever the case may be. Um, But I like to set the tone for my own day very purposefully and consciously. And so Every morning I wake up, I start the day in airplane mode, and I read this statement of what I call my daily identity affirmations. And this is where I just affirm who I am today, who I am in this moment. And that list has changed and evolved and shifted so many times over the years. You're never locking yourself into something permanently, But it's important for me that I consciously select this is the identity that I'm showing up from today. And so those two things are really key for me. The the meditating that helps me kind of clear the past baggage, if you will, in my awareness, and then really locking in this is my identity here and now. Fire Nation, what I want to just repeat here for everybody is... I set the tone for my day, not my notifications. And it's all about being proactive, not reactive, Fire Nation. When you're proactive, you wake up, your phone's on airplane mode, it stays on airplane mode, you don't dive into your emails or your social media, no. You have a proactive morning routine. You go for a walk, you breathe, you meditate, you journal. Whatever it is, the things that you want to do for yourself in the morning, you do that first. Then you can turn into reactive mode at the time of your choosing and get out there and serve other people. But first, Fire Nation, serve yourself. Now, Stefan, you've worked with entrepreneurs. You've worked with entertainers. What have you learned from these adventures? Tell us some stories. Tell us some learnings. Well, I think the biggest thing I've seen over and over again is that nobody lives from the outside in. Um, You know, I always tell this story. I was taking a lift to the airport one day in Nashville, which is one of the cities that I live in. And the driver said to me, and it was this sweet older gentleman. And he says to me in this Southern voice, he goes, Forgive me for saying this, but I can't for the life of me understand why a successful entertainer or CEO would need a life coach. And I laughed a little (laughs) bit and I might have been I might have been feeling sassy that day. okay, John. But I, I said to him, I said, well, first of all, I said, my job is not to just help people create success. Right. If you work with me, you're going to be more successful. But I said, my job is not necessarily to help people create success. My job is really to help people live in it so that their success is something that is sustainable and meaningful to them and feels good. And I said this, I, you know, I I said to him, this idea that because so-and-so just won a Grammy or because their business hit 10 million or whatever the landmark is, the idea that because somebody just won a Grammy or because their business cleared $10 million or whatever the landmark is. The idea that because that's happened, they must be doing well is just crazy. They, you know, they could be doing well on the inside, but here's the reality. Nobody lives from the outside in. If we all did, right, then there should be nobody depressed, nobody unfulfilled, nobody having a hard time in a place like Beverly Hills or Bel Air, right? Because everybody's doing great on the outside. 
And yet what we all understand is that we live from the inside out. So you can be in the beautiful $25 million home. You can be at the height of your career or business success and be a wreck on the inside. And I've seen that again and again and again. And so it's made me passionate about, hey, let's figure out how to succeed from the inside out so that what we create is both sustainable and meaningful to us. Fire Nation, nobody lives from the outside in. We live from the inside out. That is such an important phrase and meaning to just really absorb because the truth of that is 100%. I mean, think about this. We've all been impacted or entertained by Robin Williams. I mean, that guy, come on, he had it all. He had everything, the money, the fame, the family, everything. And what did he do? He committed suicide. I mean, he was a person that was probably living from the outside in, and there's a lot of struggle that goes with that because you know what? He was getting older. He was becoming less relevant. And because he wasn't living from the inside out, there was issues. There's issues in that. So remember, you have the power to live from the inside out, and that's the way that you want to be structuring your day, your life, everything going forward. And we have so much more coming, Fire Nation, as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors. As an entrepreneur just starting out or looking to scale up, it can be tricky to know which advice to follow. And if you've been thinking about making an online course part of your business, the Thinkific Trends Report is one of the most important things you'll read this year. The team at Thinkific analyzed the top 20% of creators to discover what they're doing differently to make them so darn successful. In this report, you'll uncover why top creators are two times more likely to use communities, three times more likely to sell courses and bundles, plus learn why it's time to say goodbye to to the hard sell. I can say after reading it that this report is chock full of insights you can immediately put into action today because if you're still creating courses the same way you were five years ago, you might be missing out on some big opportunities. Discover which trends are powering the most successful creators in 2022, what their secrets are to growing their business, how they focus their time, and much more. Visit thinkific.com slash fire trends. That's T-H-I-N-K-I-F-I-C dot com slash fire trends trends. This year feels like the official return of conferences and in-person events, and I'm very excited to be speaking live on stage at this year's Inbound 2022 event in Boston. Inbound 2022 is happening in person and online September 6th through the 9th, and Kate and I would love to see you there. This year, the in-person experience will include festival-style stages, including the podcast stage, what's next stage, and the main stage. Aside from hosting a live interview on the podcast stage for Entrepreneurs on Fire, I'm fired up about the connections and inspiration that'll be all around us at this year's event. If you can't join us in Boston this year, there are several other pass options available, like the Starter Pass, which is your free ticket to the Spotlight Talent. Prices are increasing, and there are only a limited number of VIP tickets available, so be sure to check out Inbound 2022 today. Inbound 2022 is built by you, powered by HubSpot. Learn more or get your tickets now at inbound.com. Dot com. So Stefan, you've seen it all. I mean, you've seen the successes, you've seen the wins, you've seen the struggles, you've seen the failures. Give us some of the most common mistakes that you are seeing people make when they are just starting out. A lot of people have this idea that if I can get this thing or get to this point, right? And specifically within entrepreneurial terms, it usually sounds like if I could just get some clients or if I could get to you know, six figures a year or 10K months or 100K months or whatever it is for you. People have this belief, when I get here, most of the time what they're telling themselves is, then I'll be happy and then I can finally stop worrying. And I would really challenge people to look at today, where are you postponing joy and where are you postponing peace? Because to me, those two things are priceless And they're also really foundational for success, not to mention sales. It's really hard to sell effectively if you don't have peace and joy. But what we what we so often do is tell ourselves, I can't really live in the joy or the peace right now. So I'm going to put it off because I've got to get here first. And once I cross that threshold, then I can really be happy and then I can really stop worrying. And my message for people is it's really got to be the other way around. 
You've got to find a way to create from the beginning, from a place of joy and peace. Or if you don't, you're never going to get there, right? And then you're going to be the person hiring me that you created the number you want. And now you have more money than ever before. And you're more afraid to lose it than ever before. And here we are back at square one, no joy, no peace, money just exacerbating the problem. So I would really challenge people at the beginning, if you're telling yourself, only when I get this, can I be happy? And only when I get this, can I stop worrying? Recognize that you're setting yourself up to be disappointed, right? That is ultimate recipe for failure. And recognize that, again, with so many of these equations, we've got it backwards. We've got to flip it around. Joy and peace are the very things that will allow you to create what you want. So please don't postpone them for later. Now, Fire Nation, is the time for joy and peace. Not after you accomplish your goal. Now. This is the journey. This is the present moment. Have joy now. Have peace now. Have those every day as you're moving forward. You're going to be happier. People around you are going to be happier. People that you're looking to inspire, impact, and serve, they're going to feel your joy. They're going to feel your peace as you're growing your business, as you're reaching more people. This is not something you want after you accomplish your goal, Fire Nation. This is something you want while you're accomplishing your goal because Biggie Smalls had it right. Mo money, mo problems, Fire Nation, especially when you weren't in peace and joy while you were getting there. So make sure that happens. So let's talk about right now, this moment, Stefan. Why is right now the perfect starting point for our listeners? Not to get overly Eckhart Tolle here, but because it's the only point that you have, it would be my initial answer to that. Um, Here's what I want people to realize. We all have a different starting point and the comparison game gets us nowhere, right? So there are people who will meet me and say, well, you have advantages I don't have. And you know what? I'm not going to argue with them. They may be right. There are people who meet me and they have not ever experienced some of the adversity that I have. And that's okay too, right? The comparison game gets us nowhere. What I want people to know is everybody has a different starting point, but these laws and principles by which the universe works, everybody has access to. And so where you currently are is the perfect starting point for whatever you want to create. And this is just such an important message to me because our brain is always going to tell us that it's not the right time and we got to get our stuff together first and this, that, and the other. Our brain will always tell us that, you know, the, the point you really want to create from is over there, past here, once you get there. And in reality, this present moment is the only place that you possibly have to create something. And so I think recognizing what if I have everything I need right here, right now to begin is such an important thing. Nobody's saying that you have to build the entire business today. But what I am going to say is you can get started today. And the idea that you need more money in the bank account, the idea that you need more experience, the idea that you're not ready yet, I call BS on. I say you're ready to start today. The comparison game, Fire Nation, it gets us nowhere. I love this phrase. I believe it with every fiber of my soul, compare and despair. If you are comparing yourself to anybody, Fire Nation, you at some level are going to despair because they're going to be richer. They're going to be in better shape. They're going to be in a better location. They're going to be doing something better at this moment in time if you play that game. End of story. The only person you should ever be comparing yourself to is you yesterday. If you're winning that comparison, Fire Nation, you're winning at life. And I loved how you put this stuff in. Where you currently are is the best starting point in Fire Nation. It's the best starting point for your journey of joy, of peace. So for you, you've got the starting point right here, Fire Nation. Start right here. Start right now. Start this journey of joy and peace because now is all you have. So let's talk about the law of correspondence, Stefan. I've actually never heard of this. I'm curious as to what this is. Break it down for us. Sure. I love this conversation. So I'm willing to bet 99% of people listening have probably heard something over the years about law of attraction, right? And ever since that documentary came out a little over a decade ago at the time of this recording, The Secret, The law of attraction has become such a mainstream concept. And 
on the one hand, it's trendy online for people to spread when it seems like they're not really having any success with it, right? So there's a lot of people teaching law of attraction that it's like, I don't know that I want the life you have, in all honesty. Then it's also become popular to hate on it, right? Because people have this idea that people are just sitting in their living room, drinking cheap wine, watching Judge Judy, and waiting for the checks to roll in. So we've got to get to a more sophisticated conversation here. The truth is there are what I would call invisible laws and principles that explain how this universe works. If you've ever heard somebody talk about metaphysics, that's what we're talking about, the science of the invisible and the laws and principles that operate on an invisible realm. There's nothing wrong inherently with teaching the idea of the law of attraction. The problem is just there's other laws. That's not the whole story. And that overly simplistic approach has gotten a lot of people confused. So, for example, law of correspondence is another law that I would say maybe even more accurately describes how things are working for people on an invisible level. And the law of correspondence simply says this. There is always going to be a correspondence between your inner world and your outer reality. Every single time, no matter what's going on, there is going to be a correspondence between your inner world and your outer reality. Law of correspondence simply says those two things are always connected, which is why we've got to live from the inside out. Because if you change your inner world, it's going to be reflected back to you. And here's where I think this gets really relevant for every entrepreneur listening to this is your business, in my opinion, just may be the clearest reflection of all. I think the reason a lot of people start down the entrepreneurial road and then get a little freaked out is, oh my God, my business is reflecting me back to me. And I don't want to have to deal with this stuff. I don't want to look at this stuff. And so what I have found is entrepreneurs should be the first people who understand law of correspondence because whatever's going on within, you're going to get a reflection of, not just in your outer reality as a whole, but especially in your business. Fire Nation, there will always, always be a correspondence of your inner world with your outer reality. That is always happening 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Change your inner world and that will be reflected in your outer world, that outer reality that you're living every single day. So Stefan, the value bombs that you've dropped are endless. We have an overall theme of this entire interview that I love about the inner world really dictating and being so important for your outer world. But what is the one phrase, the one takeaway, the one thing that you really wanna make sure our listeners get from this chat. As cliche as it may sound, I really want people to know that the moment you're in, the position you're in, the situation you're in is the perfect starting point for you to create something new. And I I don't just mean, you know, create an idea, create a project, create I mean create something starting from within. Like you may feel like you're having an experience of lack and stress and worry when it comes to money. But what if today is the perfect starting point for you to begin having a new relationship to money and a new experience of wealth? You may feel like you are terrified of visibility and not ready to show up. But what if it turns out today is the perfect starting point for you to actually step into the leadership you were born for? I really believe there can be people who look back on this episode and say, you know, I decided to make that day one of something new for myself, totally. for my life, for my business. And I dropped the excuses and I really, I really went for it. Oh, that's going to happen. We are going to hear about it. Fire Nation, this could be you right now that Stefan's talking about. So if it is, just do it. Make it happen. Listen to this. Start making your inner world your priority. So Stefan, where can we find out more about you? If you have something you want to give Fire Nation or as a call to action, let us know right now and then we'll say goodbye. I taught a 50 minute masterclass about the seven reasons people don't feel like manifesting works for them. Um, and I really taught it for this kind of person, the kind of person who suspects that their inner game matters, who really is, you know, already sold on the concept that, you know what, 
there probably is some stuff happening with my inner world that's affecting what shows up in my outer reality and in my business. I feel like there's a lot of BS out there, but I really am curious and I do really want to learn about this. That's the person that I recorded this masterclass for. And, you know, I don't like opt-ins that are just sales pitches any more than you do. Uh, so it's really full of value. We've had people tell us they downloaded it, they listened to it every single day because it's so inspiring and practically helpful for them. So we have that available. There's a link just for all of you in Fire Nation. It is fire.americaslifecoach.us. You can go download it for free and get that information because like I said, there is so much more going on than the law of attraction. And when you really understand what's happening invisibly with these laws and principles, you really start to take your power back in your life. Fire Nation, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, and you have been hanging out with SL and JLD today, so keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com and just type Stefan in the search bar, and his show notes page is going to pop up with everything that we've been talking about today, the links, all the jazz, best show notes in the industry. And again, Fire Nation, the call to action is Life coach.us. Go over there, consume that content. It is great stuff for the soul. And Stefan, thank you, brother, for sharing your truth with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we will catch you on the flip side. Thank you, John. Hey, Fire Nation. Today's value bomb content was brought to you by Stefan and successful entrepreneurs. They accomplish a big goals. That's why I created the Freedom Journal to guide you, Fire Nation, in accomplishing your number one goal in 100 days. And we're talking step by step. So visit thefreedomjournal.com. Use promo code podcast for a legit, we're talking like $15 discount as a thank you for listening to my podcast. And I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. Still think you can create an online course the same way you did five years ago? Think again. Thinkific has looked at the top 20% of course creators to see what they're doing now to be so darn successful. Find out for yourself at thinkific.com slash fire trends. Business Made Simple, hosted by Donald Miller, takes the mystery out of growing your business. Recent episodes like how to attract and retain top talent and how to make more money with your current products are straight fire. Listen to Business Made Simple wherever you get your podcasts.